What's up everyone, it's day 48 of 75 hard. I just finished my second workout of the day. I did my 45 minute outdoor workout, which consisted of another 35 pound ruck. I went a little over two miles and I did 20 pushups every lap. So I did 140 pushups in all in all. And last night, another easy night at work. Uh, frack was down for a few hours, so I was able to sleep for probably three hours. I woke up this morning at 9.30. I went to bed about six. Uh, but I didn't need any more sleep than that. So I got up and straight went straight to the gym and did 45 minutes on their tread climber. And then I did an arm workout. Uh, the scale's down to 217. If you remember, I started at 235. So still coming down, but not as fast as I want. So this week I'm going to alter my diet and drop some of the carbs and do uh, carb cyclings. Uh, some One day I'll eat zero to like 50 carbs and then one day I'll eat like 100 carbs and then max out at uh, 150 is what I've been eating, 250 protein, 150 carbs, and 50 uh, fat. It's around 2,000 calories, um, or a little over. But uh, I'm gonna cut that back and then it'll, by the end of the week, that amount of deficit will create more weight loss. So I wanna get down to about 205 by the end of the program. I'm still debating on doing a bodybuilding show in seven weeks. December 2nd. Uh, it's the same show I did last year. I did the, the 75 hard program and then I did a bodybuilding show towards the end of it. I wasn't really preparing to do a bodybuilding show for the months leading up to starting 75 hard, but I was dieting down and starting to look decent. So I jumped in it anyways to see, cause I had done one uh, probably seven years before that in 2015 and that was the last time, but I always talked about doing it. And I'm not the type of person that likes to just talk about things. I like to make, uh, uh, action. I like to do what I, what I say I'm going to do. So I did it and I wanted to do like a one year transformation between last year and this year and see what the difference was by action. Cause this whole year, if you know, uh, before 75 hard last year, I was drinking almost every day for a few years, probably five years. Um, so obviously wasn't in the best shape and I had some weight that I didn't need to have, but, uh, this whole year I haven't drank. So I have a lot less body fat and a lot less um, water weight or whatever you want, bloat weight, crap weight, whatever you want to call it since I haven't been drinking. So I wanted to make a transformation pic, uh, picture com comparison, but we'll see. I haven't fully committed to that, but I know I need to make up my mind pretty soon because if you know anything about bodybuilding, there's ways you have to prepare and this show is not a natural show, if you know what I mean. So if I'm going to get on it, I need to get on it and I'll let you know what I decide. Um, feeling good otherwise just sore from my workouts my chest and my back are pretty sore uh, to be doing legs tomorrow so that won't affect anything uh, I expect work to be another easy night I got work in about oh, an hour and a half and uh, feeling good otherwise like I said the diet's going good not still not real hungry getting all my meals in that I need to and it's I feel better not being hungry than I do being hungry all the time so Everything's going good otherwise. Today, the message I wanted to give out was how so many of us go through life. We have somebody with us that is, you know, probably in a relationship, but most, mostly in relationships, but also to family members, friends. We're always looking to change them. There's, there's things that they do that, you know, either annoys us or it's not progressing in the relationship. And the uh, fact is, Nobody's gonna change until they did make the decision to change for themselves. You can nag them all you want. You can, and most likely the nagging is, you know, causing them to not change just as quickly as you want them to. Because like me, if somebody's constantly telling me to do something, I don't feel like I need to listen to somebody telling me what to do most of the time in my past. Nowadays, if somebody gives me a positive feedback, I know how to incorporate it into my life. But the fact is you can't waste all of your time spending it with somebody that's not going to change for you if they're just, you know for the long term people will change for a weekend or a week and everything will be great and then it'll just go back to the way it was because the person didn't fully commit to changing in the way that you want them to and a lot of times we want people to change not just for their benefit we want them to change to benefit us to make us happy and that's not the way that it needs to be. We need to focus on ourselves and changing ourselves and making ourselves into the best person that we can be to put, to be the best person in the relationship or in the friendship or in the family. And 
we just spend so much time trying to get that person changed whenever there's, you know, people over here that are a better fit for what you're trying to find. So instead of putting all your effort into one person that's obviously made a decision to not be the person that you want them to be or isn't the person that they were at the beginning of a relationship or when you first met them, you might just need to cut them out. And I know that seems harsh, but the harder thing to do is to stay there with them, keep them around. If you're not getting the fulfillment out of your life and the, you know, the, them cheering you on towards your goals, the person that you're with doesn't necessarily have to be on the same path as you, but as long as they are, you know, nice obviously and treat you right, but also cheering you on if they're comfortable where they are and you accept them where they are and you're trying to reach your goals, that can still work. Or somebody that's trying to, you know, reach heavy, uh, big goals too, and you're both reach, trying to reach big goals, that can work. But some, the way it won't work is if you're trying to reach a big goal and the other person's just being negative and trying to drag you down and doesn't motivate you to accomplish your goals. And then you just sit back because you don't think you need to be trying to go towards your goals because you don't want to hurt their feelings or you want to offend them in the way that they say things. That's just the, the, the wrong way to look at things. And like I said, I know it seems harsh that I say to cut them out, but that's just the way it has to be. You have to, if anything's not causing you peace and happiness in your life, you just need to cut it out because life is too short to spend it with somebody that's not the type of person that's going to treat you right and, and commit to the promises that they make to you. And one of those promises that you can expect, even if it's unsaid, is the way that person is whenever you first meet them. If that's not the way that they are, you know, all the time, that's breaking a promise because that's just tricking you into loving them, into liking them, into the relationship or whatever, the friendship. They're just tricking you into it. That's breaking a promise. You can count that as a promise. If somebody's a certain way when you meet them and they change, they weren't never that person to begin with. And if it's sometimes you're the reason why that they, that, you know, they changed from the beginning, because if you're constantly trying to change somebody into the way that you want them to be exactly, you know, that can cause somebody to not be the type of person that they were at the beginning. So sometimes it's us and we're the reason why that they changed. And that's why I fall back on saying we need to just focus on changing ourselves and create the individual that we admire, that we can look in the mirror and be proud of. And sometimes whenever you make that realization that the, the relationship that you're in isn't, you know, creating that happiness in your life, there's so many other people in this world and to sit around and dwell on having this one relationship with, with this one person just because we get to this point in our lives where we feel like we don't know if we can do any better or we can't get anybody else or we don't want to be alone and the truth is most people don't can't be alone they get this anxiety and this depression about them and i've been through it all these things that i talk about and these messages that i give out are things that i've dealt with and and have been through and i know most people if not all of us have to deal with the same things. So I'm just sharing how I've dealt with things. I know I've been the person in my life uh, at one point where I was the one that needed to change and somebody left me because I wasn't changing or I would only change for a couple of days. And that's what that, that's what needed to happen. They needed to leave me and I needed to realize that I needed to correct the, the things in, that I always said, I, I, you know, deep down in your, in your body tells you, your conscious mind tells you all the time how you need to be and the way that you need to act and the things that you need to do. And I wasn't listening to it. And even like I said, I quit alcohol last October 1st. Mackenzie was 14 at that time. So I let 14 years go by and that wasn't enough of a reason. That didn't give me, that didn't cause me to stop the drinking, which like I've said in the past, I wasn't like, abusive or you know mean to her or anything like that but the, that's a bad example to set it shows that if both of your parents that are split up are both drinking all the time that's a bad example like that's going to cause them to want to why are they drinking all the time let me see what this drinking's all about then have bad habits with their friends and they're too young or and you know it could lead to things that don't need to happen if, you, if they see that you were like that and then you cut it out and you give reasons why you cut it out and i'll show them all the positives that come out of not doing it are gonna find that they don't need to do it. They're gonna see that you're the type of person that keeps their word and does what they say they're going to do. So, like I said, sometimes it's easier to, or I would say all the time. It's gonna be hard at first when you leave somebody behind 
that you love or that you care about a lot, but if it's the better thing to do for your life, you're gonna know it. You tell yourself it all the time. I, know, I can't think of so many times, I can't think of all the times, but there were so many where I was with somebody in this last relationship I was in, I would just always say, why are you putting up with this? Why are you, why, 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 why? And it was just me knowing that I needed to end it and be done with it, but also still at the same time thinking I couldn't do any better and and that nobody else, this was still when I was not comfortable being fully, fully comfortable being alone. It's like I was fine and then got in a relationship that didn't last very long. And then that caused to have me to have like that same, I guess trauma from uh, th the thought of being alone again, because it was like, I thought I found something that would work, but back to whenever, I, whenever I got back to being alone again, I'm still alive and you would, you will be too. So you don't need somebody to be treating you the way that you don't deserve to be treated. And you don't need to be with somebody that's not gonna change their attitude and be the type of person that they always promised that they would be. They're always breaking their promises. It's time to just let it go. The best thing I can suggest to uh, recalibrate your mindset to where you're comfortable with yourself and you build the self-confidence because you're doing things that are hard and you commit to doing them every single day without failure is the 75 hard program. You can learn all about it on the episode 208 on the Real AF podcast with Andy Frisilla. Uh, it's the Live Hard and 75 hard program. It's a one-year program. You can learn all about it. Uh, I suggest you listen to that. Pick a diet and start tomorrow. Commit to it though because you don't want to be doing it and then fail and then start over and then you don't want to be that type of person. You want to, if you let anybody know that you're doing it, you're hey, I found this cool program or if you already know all about it, start quit waiting around quit waiting for the best day quit waiting for after the holidays quit waiting for whatever to start you'll never regret losing the weight that that you're going to end up losing or gaining whichever but you will regret not starting sooner and not taking back control of your life so that's my message for today if you find any enjoyment out of it or you think anybody else needs to hear it please share it i appreciate all the support if you're already doing 75 hard i'm cheering you on keep doing it a good job you won't regret it at the end. The result's well worth it. And uh, I got about an hour to work, so I'm gonna chill out for a little bit, upload this video, and I'll be back tomorrow for day 49. Peace.